Are you sick of high drug prices? Yeah. Nah, not good enough. Are you sick of high drug prices? Yeah. All right. All right. I'm so honored to be here today, not only with Senator Bernie Sanders, but uh, of course with the nurses. Where would we be without the nurses? Let's hear it for the nurses. We have such a great coalition, AARP, the nurses, Vote Vets, uh, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, so many others, and, and the support that we've been picking up all over the state. You know, Bernie talked a lot about a political revolution because he understood, he understood that it wasn't about running for office alone. It was about nurturing a movement. And we understand the reason why we have a road sign is because we know that this is just one mile of that battle that it has to go on beyond California. It has to go on beyond state purchases. But, you know, every once in a while, I just have that tingle as I'm standing here knowing that I'm part of history being made on this spot in this moment. You know, you can get very jazzed at a moment like this, seeing a crowd like this that's so enthusiastic and uh, you're getting all the positive feedback. Bernie's video on Facebook just in the last week has gotten more than 1.2 million views in the state of California among voters. And we have two of those, that bus and another bus going the highways and byways of California talking to voters and so many other things that are going on. But I'll tell you, the biggest enemy in a campaign in the last three weeks, what is it? It's complacency. So, you know, a lot of you have not been involved in the campaign before you're here because you supported Bernie, as, we, as many of us did, but we need you. We need you to talk to your families, your friends, your neighbors, your uh, social media contacts, and get them out here. So, uh, you know, when you are in an initiative campaign like this, you get asked a lot of questions. You say, well, why are you doing this? They ask me as a proponent, why am I doing this? Because I just got sick and tired of year after year, the Congress and the California legislature not doing anything, bill after bill getting killed. And so we knew that only the people could make this change. And that's why we have an initiative process. And we're thrilled by the response that we've been getting. But, uh, I have the very, very distinct honor today of getting to introduce Senator Sanders. And so I just want to tell you a little bit about my background with uh, Senator Sanders. Four years ago, he sponsored a piece of legislation that said instead of giving unlimited profits to companies when they get a patent for a drug, for a drug that's a matter of life and death, we should give people a prize, a one-time prize for coming up with a great medication and bringing it to market. That was a great idea. So AIDS Healthcare Foundation was so honored to be part of and support Bernie's bill. And then in 2012, he and I sat on a panel at the International AIDS Conference in uh, Washington where we uh, spoke about bringing down drug prices. Okay, so without further ado, you didn't come here to hear me. So without further ado, let's hear it for Senator Bernie Sanders. Okay, whoa. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thank you all very much for coming out. Let me thank the local 47 of the Musicians Union for allowing us to use their facility. Kathleen Halal and Michael Weinstein and Zenny Cortez and Steve Dunwoody, thank you very much for your presentations. Guys, what we are here to talk about today is not just a health care issue, not just an economic issue. It is a very profound moral issue. 
It is whether or not people in our country should get sicker than they should get or even die because they don't have enough money to pay the prices that the pharmaceutical industry is charging us. That's the issue. And I say it is time for the pharmaceutical industry to stop ripping off the people of this country. Let me tell you, let me tell you a story where I first got deeply involved in this issue. In the late 1990s, I took a busload of Vermonters across the Canadian border to buy prescription drugs. And the reason I did it, and the people who were with me on the bus were mostly women who were struggling with breast cancer, working class women fighting for their lives. And we went to Montreal, and we had arranged this, and they walked into a drugstore, and they bought the medicine that they needed, the same exact medicine they were buying in Vermont in the United States. They bought it in Canada for one-tenth of the price, 10%. And I will never forget tears coming down the cheeks of some of these women who were struggling for their lives and were having a hard time paying for the medicine they desperately needed. But it was not just them at that point. Right now, if you want to hear about crazy and you want to hear about dysfunctionality, in America today, one out of five people who go to their doctor's office and get a prescription are unable to afford to buy that prescription. Talk about crazy. So people are sick, and the nurses well understand it. They go to the doctor or nurse because they're sick. They get a prescription, and they can't even afford to fill it. My state and all over this country, there are hundreds of thousands of elderly people who are cutting their pills in half, which is a bad thing to do because they cannot afford to buy the medicine that they need. Our job is to tell the pharmaceutical industry that we will not continue to pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. And it's not just Canada, it's all over Europe. And the reason that their drug prices are lower is because in every instance, the governments negotiate prices with the drug companies. Now, what we've got in this country is really quite incredible. You can walk in to your pharmacy tomorrow and find out that the medicine you've been using for 20 years has doubled or tripled in price. There is no legislation, there is no language anywhere which prevents the drug companies from charging us any price they want, and that is precisely what they are doing. The reality today is that the pharmaceutical industry has become a major health hazard to the American people. Since 2003, total spending on prescription drugs in our country has more than doubled, more than doubled. Now here is maybe the most important point. And that is, while millions of Americans cannot afford the medicine they desperately need, while some of them die and others become sicker, last year, the five major drug companies made $50 billion in profit. 
and the top executives of the 10 largest drug companies made collectively over $300 million in compensation. So Americans die or get sick because they can't afford the medicine they need. Drug companies receive huge profits and the CEOs of those companies get outrageous compensation packages. Now, why does this happen? Well, I'll tell you exactly why it happens. It happens because the pharmaceutical industry is one of the most powerful forces in Washington, D.C. Since 1988, listen to this. This is really quite incredible. Since 1988, they have spent $3 billion in lobbying and have made hundreds of millions of dollars in campaign contributions. They currently have 1,400 paid lobbyists in Washington, D.C. right now, working day and night to make sure that we pay outrageously high prices for the medicine that we need. Let me just give you a few examples of the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. And I want to tell you something. They are getting nervous. Tell you a very funny story. Yes, they're getting nervous, and you are making them very nervous. Thank you. And the reason that they are nervous is they understand that if we win here in California, other states in the country will be following very, very quickly. And when we talk about a corrupt campaign finance system, man, you are up against that right now. My understanding is that the pharmaceutical industry is prepared to spend up to $100 million to defeat Proposition 61. Well, they could spend all of the money that they want, but the people understand that they're a bunch of crooks and we're going to beat them. But you know, it's a, just stop and think. One, here you have elderly people cutting their medicine in half. People can't afford the medicine they need, and yet they have $100 million to dump in to lying TV ads here in California. Now, when you defeat the pharmaceutical industry here, you are not only going to send a profound message all across this country that we're tired of their greed and of their profiteering, you're gonna do even more than that. You're gonna show that the American people are prepared to stand up to powerful corporations who are trying to buy elections. Now, I just learned something a couple of hours ago, which I thought was kind of funny. We sent out a tweet. A tweet from my Senate office, which talked about the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. And we particularly spoke about a company called Ariad, who is charging something like $199,000 a year for leukemia treatment. Well, after we sent that tweet out, their stock started to crash. And apparently their stockholders lost some $387 million. So let me say it again. This is a industry which is extraordinarily greedy 
an industry that we have got to stand up to, an industry that has got to provide the medicine that people desperately need, not only here in this country, but poor people all over the world need affordable medicine. Let me just give you a few examples, only a few, of some of the outrages that are going on within the pharmaceutical industry. Mylan increased the price of EpiPens by some 500% since 2009, from $57 to more than $600. Turing Pharmaceuticals increased the price of Daraprim by 5,000% overnight, from $13.50 to $750 for one pill. Valiant increased the price of the lead poisoning drug known as calcium EDTA by 2,700% in a single year from $7,000 to $27,000. These people believe that they have the right to charge us any price that they can, ignoring the suffering that takes place when people cannot afford that medicine. Now, let me give you another example, comparing prices. I live 50 miles away from the Canadian border. In the United States, it costs $730 for a 90-day supply of Crestor, which is used to treat high cholesterol, but just $160 in Canada. Nexium, $736 in the United States, $214 in Canada. Celebrex, $895 in the United States, $212 in Canada. This is the same exact medicine in the same exact bottles made by the same exact companies. So what we are here to say is enough is enough. Now this is not only about people becoming needlessly sick or dying. It is about people having to go deeply in debt to purchase the drugs they need to stay alive. It is about taxpayers spending unnecessary amounts of money by the billions for Medicaid or Medicare because the drug companies charge us such very high prices. It is about health care costs going up because of the outrageously high prices of the pharmaceutical industry. So here we are in California, and here you have brought forth the most significant proposition in the country today to end pharmaceutical industry greed. Now they are going to spend, they are going to say whatever they have to say, whatever lies that they can come up with to try to frighten people and to bombard the airwaves with 30 second ads. But the people of California are smart and they understand that there must be a reason why the drug companies are prepared to spend up to $100 million. And that reason is that if you beat them here, we're going to put them on the defensive. We're going to lower the cost of medicine all across this country. So let me thank AARP, because they know what high drug prices are doing to seniors. Let me thank my brothers and sisters at the National Nurses United because they do not want to have to be treating patients who are so much sicker than they otherwise should be. And let me thank all of my friends and all of you 
brothers and sisters, we are going to take on the pharmaceutical industry. We're going to take on the insurance industry. We're going to take on a corrupt campaign finance system, which is allowing the drug companies to spend unlimited sums of money so that they can continue to rip off our people. Brothers and sisters, work hard on this issue. We need your help. The entire nation is looking at California. Let's go forward together. Thank you all very much.